Hello you guys and welcome to Abundantly Minimal. My name is Sarah and thank you so much for joining me. In this video I want to share the five biggest pitfalls of decluttering or basically mistakes that I made over the last three years of my minimalism journey that I want to help you avoid making, especially if you plan on decluttering this year. Most of these things stem from what we kind of think we should do or just habits that can be kind of tough to break and I want us to be able to avoid these mistakes to really help you simplify your life and live your best life with less this year. Let's begin. The first tip, don't declutter just to declutter. Especially when you're starting out or maybe you've been on the journey for a while, it feels really good to declutter. You'll get kind of a rush when you're able to simplify your space and it's a great way to feel like you're making progress. However, while this progress is a really great thing, sometimes we might be motivated to get rid of something just to get rid of it, just to keep feeling even better about living simply. But we might accidentally declutter something that we actually use sometimes and then have to replace it again in the future. Or you might start to wish, man, I wish I would have kept that. Now, of course, I don't want us to hold back on too many of our items because of this fear, but we wanna make sure we're being intentional about it and not just getting rid of things for the sake of getting rid of them. There really haven't been too many items that I've had that are like this, but it's definitely an important consideration to think about and not to just get caught up in the hype of getting rid of your stuff. My second tip is to not take on too much at once. I'm very much a go-getter type of person, maybe some of you are, and if I'm gonna do something, I wanna jump all in, do as much as possible, but real life often gets in the way and it can prevent us from accomplishing our goals. Pick a targeted spot in your space that you can start decluttering first, so then you don't have many half-finished projects in your space that are actually stressing you out instead of making you feel better. Working on one small section at a time can be really helpful because often when you're simplifying, at least the way I've done it, you take everything out and try to figure out what you have, kind of get an inventory of it, figure out what is important, where it will go, and putting it back in a good system for yourself. So that whole process can be time consuming sometimes, and especially when you're first getting everything out. Like for example, if you're decluttering your closet, for me, it has been most helpful to take everything out and lay it on the bed. Then the bed is insanely packed with clothes, but you just work through it one chunk at a time. My next tip of a decluttering pitfall to avoid, don't exclusively rely on the guidance or opinions of others. You might have seen some different decluttering videos online. I know I have done quite a few on my channel with suggested list of items to declutter. Likewise, maybe you have people in your life who have decluttered certain things, but you couldn't imagine parting with certain things. One thing we have to remember is that we're all different. We're all living a different lifestyle. We have different interests and there's no one size fits all approach to minimalism. You wanna to try to figure out what is the system that will work for you. So if there's something someone is telling you to get rid of or they're advocating to get rid of and you don't want to, keep it. There's no need to get rid of that item if you get value out of it. I get comments all the time and I see comments on some of these other videos like, how could you say get rid of books? I love my books. If you love your books, then don't get rid of them. Or someone might say, well, don't get rid of that. You can use it for all of these things. Then if that works for you, then don't get rid of it and you can use it for all those things. When we really take it back to that personal level, it can be you know, the ideal lifestyle for us. You know, I think the whole point of simplifying is so what you have in your life does add value to you or is useful. We wanna eliminate that stuff that honestly doesn't make you happy. It just takes up space or financial resources and you don't even use it in a practical sense. We wanna get rid of stuff like that because I know that when we first started, we had a lot of stuff like that that we just had, but we didn't actually use or enjoy. There's a lot of great inspiration out there, and when people have those lists of videos, like I know I've done um, for different items to declutter, I always recommend to use it kind of like, you know, just a, a set of ideas and, and see if you can pull one or two new ideas from that that you could incorporate. So maybe they say a certain item, you're like, oh yeah, I hadn't thought about that. But not to think, okay, let me use their exact list and go through every different section of my space and use that as the rules. Don't just rely on the paths of others, carve your own path of what works for you. My next tip is to not become overly sentimental. When we're decluttering, we may find ourselves feeling a lot of emotions with different items. 
And what I'm not saying is that you need to get rid of all your emotional stuff or sentimental items, but it's important for us to stay level-headed when we're trying to declutter things and not construct a sentimental meaning or emotional connection to the item that prevents us from getting rid of it, especially if it doesn't actually have that sentimental purpose. It's very easy to create that sentimental bond with our items, and if they're not sentimental items to begin with. Now for this, I'm gonna illustrate it with a couple examples. I had Jake select some random items from our space, and with these items, I'm going to, you know, share some sentimental, emotional story with it, but with hopes that you'll see how silly it is when it's not your own stuff um, coming up with these stories. Now, these are all three things I have no intention of getting rid of um, just because we don't have that many items anymore that are just waiting to be decluttered, but hopefully you'll still see how the example works from it. So one thing here, this is a dress of mine and it's a regular dress. I like it a lot. I wear it a lot when it's warm and for school. I just put like a little jacket over it. But if I was to craft some sort of story about the sentimentalness of it, I could talk about, wow, you know, this dress, I wore it um, during really important times of my first year of teaching. Um, or maybe this was a dress I wore like on the first day of school or one of the last days of school. So, you know, I really think about, you know, how special that was. You know, this is, this is all garbage I'm making up, but the idea that we might think of a certain piece of clothing like, oh wow, I wore that on this very special day, I must keep it. Even if, do you wear it anymore? I actually do wear this one, but you might have some pieces that are like, wow, you know, I wore that for this event. But if you're not wearing it anymore and you don't plan on wearing it anymore, let's not get overly emotional about it. Here's another random one, this is a toothbrush case. Pretty tough to get emotional about a toothbrush case, but I could say, you know, I bought this for uh, the first trip Jake and I took together for our belated honeymoon that we did back in 2015. I could talk about that, but in general, that's not how I actually feel, but for something as basic as a toothbrush case, which I still use, I'm not getting rid of it, I could craft a story. Here's a random pencil. Again, I'm still gonna keep using it. School supplies are very important when you're a teacher and you don't wanna waste anything. But with this pencil, I could come up with a story about you know, how I got it. Was it like given as a gift of part of a set? You could be overly sentimental about the time you received it, about the color, oh, this color is symbolic of. We can become kind of crazy when we're trying to justify the stuff that we have. So keep yourself level-headed. Don't become overly sentimental about the stuff that we have. At the end of the day, it's just stuff. And then lastly, don't let the items you've decluttered sit around your space for too long. Sometimes we start to have second thoughts if we keep an item in our space. We do keep a decluttering bin in our closet, which is really convenient because we can add to it at any point. And typically about once per month, we'll take stuff to donation centers. But know yourself and depending on what you're decluttering or how much you're decluttering, the sooner you're able to get that stuff out of your space, the better. One trend that sometimes happens is, let's say you were feeling really good, you got rid of a lot of stuff and you put it in a box or wherever and you don't actually get around to donating it or getting rid of it in a short period of time. And before long you think, hmm, I'm gonna reach back in there and take that back and put that back in my space. And you might think that holding on to it allows you to make more of a decision, but it could be problematic. I know for myself, for the most part, I haven't regretted the things I've decluttered. So even though it might be tempting, like, well, what if I just keep it to the side? Will I really use it? You might think that having it there in your space will allow you to make that decision, but sometimes it leads us to go back into our old habits and, and go back and get those items again to incorporate into our lives, which is not the point of decluttering. We're trying to remove that excess stuff that doesn't add value. Clearly, if you thought it didn't add value to you when you were getting rid of it, it likely will not add value later on. So that wraps up the five decluttering pitfalls. But if you want to have a really successful year of decluttering, I recommend trying to make it fun as much as possible and be really goal oriented about what you're hoping to achieve in your space or in your life. Those have also been really positive things that have helped me in addition to avoiding the pitfalls I mentioned earlier in the video. That being said, if you guys haven't already subscribed to the channel, you can actually do so up here. I post a new minimalism related video every week. And I've got so many other decluttering videos that you can check out here if you are interested in learning more. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye.